all right hello everybody so my videos i might have to make them a little smaller so that we can go between the different um oh goodness so that we can go between the different assignments so right now we're going through the website that has homework for week 11 and week 12. so if you have that homework if you don't have it out go ahead and take out homework week 11 and week 12 and let's actually start going through some of the information that should be on there now if you read start at the top it says directions read each set of directions read them carefully make sure you answer the questions with your own answer or opinion unless stated otherwise so those first two questions are going to be your opinions it can't be wrong but you definitely have to take a guess so if you have any questions or need help with that please let me know again the contact information from video one has remind app it has a phone number and it has my email so first question says what are three ideas or things you believe about viruses before you start any research there's been a lot of stuff going on around in the news about viruses most people have heard of the flu which is called influenza most people have heard of HIV, most people have heard of Ebola, most people have heard of rabies. So go ahead and take some guesses or make an inference about the things that you already know and write that down. So write three different ones for A, one for A, one thing for B, and then one thing for C. Number two, it says, how do changes in society affect, in science affect society? So let's think about the different things that happen in science that change from year to year or from century to century. People in the 1600s don't have the same science understand, scientific understanding as the people today. So I want you to take a second and think, in your opinion, how do the changes in science affect society? How do they affect the way that we live? How do we, they affect the way that we understand the rest of the world all right so go ahead and do number one and two when you're ready let's move on to number three so before we do number three there's a few things before it many of you don't like to read the directions so let's actually read them there's a website that goes with it and where it says virus explorer you might actually have to put another slash behind virus explorer the directions say go to the website above click on the button that says launch interactive when you click on the button that says launch interactive it is going to bring you to this website here now we have a few questions before we click on anything that we're going to be looking at that says what are four criteria used to classify viruses you have one two three four five six different ways to classify viruses i'm only asking you to list four for number four i'm gonna have you guys go ahead and listen to what i say because i'm going to tell you what the answer is for the description so for number four the letters nm that abbreviation actually means nanometer letter is n-a-n M E T E R nanometer. The second one is BP. That actually means base pairs. Base B A S E pairs P A I R S. S S. This is something just like base pairs that you should be really familiar with. Single stranded. What do we know that's single stranded? So go ahead and think to yourself, what's single stranded? Okay, I know that something can be single stranded and if you look below it, it says DS, something can be double stranded. They're nucleic acids. It's DNA and RNA. Now, which one is which? We know that DNA is your double stranded one. We know that the single stranded one is going to be RNA. So make sure for description, you have NM, which is a nanometer, BP, which is base pairs, SS, which is single stranded, and DS, which is double stranded. 
All right, let's move to the next area of the homework, the next page. Number five. Oh, look, there's directions above it. It says locate the I next to each viral characteristic. So if we locate the I, the first one that we're looking at is envelope. Boom, we click that. The question, it states, not all viruses have an envelope. If a virus has this outer layer, explain how it forms. You are going to read this passage and you're going to tell me how the virus actually forms after reading this. It's not even a passage, it's a paragraph. Boom, right there. All right, now to close out of there, you just click the X. The next part says structure. What determines the, the shape of the capsid or the core? If we click here, because again, don't forget, we're clicking on the I next to the different words. So we're clicking on the I again next to the different classifications. The question says, what determines the shape of the capsid or the core? So that means, number one, the shape is going to be determined by either the capsid, meaning the outside, or the core. If you read this paragraph right here, this is going to actually tell you what the answer is. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to click here to exit out. And you can also look at this site on a cell phone too. So nice and easy. Number seven the host. So we're going to click this I. From the virus's perspective, what, why is the host important? Go ahead and read this paragraph. And as an example, let's go ahead and read through this. A host is the organism that a virus infects and replicates in. Viruses can only replicate inside a host cell. Viral hosts include animals, plants, bacteria, fungi, and archaea. Many viruses have evolved to infect multiple kinds of hosts, while others have a more limited host range. The most important thing right here that it was asking was that question, why is the host important? In order for something to live, in order for it to replicate, in order for it to reproduce and make more. And we kind of want to use the word replicate with viruses because they're not technically alive. They have to go inside something that is alive. So this virus can only be replicated inside of a host cell, whether it is humans because we belong to animalia or any other animal, plant, bacteria, fungi, or archaea. And we should remember that these things, animals and plants and fungi, those belong to eukarya. And they are eukaryotes. And then we also should be remembering that bacteria and archaea are our two prokaryotes. All right, let's click out of here. The next question is for transmission. So we're going to go to transmission right here. And then we're going to click this I. I want you to tell me what a vector is and what the word zoonotic is. You can just give me an example or you can give me the definition. If you look here, perfect answer. A virus that is transmitted from a vertebrate animal to humans is considered zoonotic or zoonotic, sorry. Therefore, that's what you would end up saying for zoonotic. I want you to go ahead and look for vector. Another place you might hear vector is also in math. So again, remember, some words have multiple meanings. If we look at vaccine, it says vaccine, what is one advantage of being vaccinated against a particular virus? We click here on the I and then it tells you a vaccine is a substance that when taken into the body, should induce a protective immune response to a virus. When an individual who has been vaccinated against a virus comes in contact with that virus, the body should already be prepared to fight the infection. 
scientists have developed vaccines that protect humans and some animals from diseases that cause several virus infections. Human infectious diseases for which we have effective vaccines include smallpox, polio, and seasonal influenza. The one that you guys would more than likely be used to hearing is someone saying, hey, did you get the flu vaccine? That would be what they mean by a seasonal influenza vaccine. And make sure that you answer one of the questions, or I'm sorry, question nine. Number 10, this is going to be a personal question. So you answer this. If you could pick any virus in the world to have a vaccination, which one would it be and why? So go ahead and take the time to read through that. Actually think about it and give me your answer. This cannot be wrong. It is your answer and I wanna hear your opinion. I want you to think about it and give me what and why you really think these things that it should happen. So let's move a little bit further. I'm gonna go a little faster now because you guys should be a little bit more familiar. It says virus scavenger hunt. What is one difference between rabies and the influenza virus? In order to find that, you have to click rabies. It's gonna load up. If you wanna see what it looks like this way and turn it, you can. If you wanna turn it this way, you can rotate it that way. And you can also rotate it this way. Now, if you wanna view this virus and you actually wanna cut it in half and see what is it made of, what's on the inside, Boom, click cross section. It literally cuts it in half. Now, the information that you're looking for is right down here. You have what family the rabies virus belongs to, the size of it, the fact that it's enveloped, it has a bullet shape, the core has a helical symmetry, and we learned that word helical when we talked about DNA. Look how it has a spiral shape to it. It's telling us that it has linear DNA, it is single-stranded, negative, and it goes with the RNA genome. And it has about 12,000 base pairs. It infects humans, dogs, rodents, and other mammals. A vaccine is available for this. So then you will click out of here. You will go to the influenza A virus. And again, if you want to look at the different ways to view this virus and the structure of it, you can click, click cross-section, all of that. Your information is down here. What is something that we automatically should notice? It's single-stranded. They're both linear. They both have the RNA genome. And this one actually is a little different. It has segments to it. This one affects humans, pigs, other mammals, and birds. A new vaccine is produced for seasonal strains each year. You have more than one type of strain. And please give me a call. We can talk about different types of viruses, how they become different types. Any questions at all, just let me know. Let's skip on down to number 17. It says you're gonna click the plus. So let's go to the rabies virus. People often associate rabies virus with dogs. Why is this an incomplete thought process? If we click this button and we go down to the information, yes, we associate it with dogs. However, it affects many other things. What are they? Go ahead and tell me that. So if you have any questions with this assignment, please let me know. Good luck.